Today we're going to install a tool called EmuDeck for your Steam Deck. EmuDeck downloads and configures your device with everything you need to enjoy emulation on the Steam Deck. It takes care of the RetroArch configuration, your gamepad configuration, aspect ratio setup, and more. To complement this video, you'll find a link below to a written guide with links and additional information. Now let's get started setting up EmuDeck. I'm John and welcome to Wagner's Tech Talk. Today I'll be using a dock which has a keyboard connected, HDMI output to capture the video, and the power going into the dock to charge the Steam Deck during the installation. You only need to connect a single USB-C cable to the top port on the Steam Deck. As soon as it's connected, the HDMI signal will then transition to my external monitor. To make the setup process easier for you to see, I'll switch over to the video capture as well. To get started with the EmuDeck installation, I'll first press the Steam button, then navigate down to the Power option, and then select the option to switch to Desktop. After a brief delay, the Steam Deck will then enter Desktop mode. To make things a little easier, I'll launch the Firefox browser and load up the EmuDeck guide directly on the Steam Deck. There are additional resources and links that you may find helpful, as well as the installation section. If you have a number of BIOS and games that you're going to be copying, you may want to adjust the power savings option to a larger number. The default is 5 minutes, and you don't want the Steam Deck to power off during the process. Here I've adjusted mine to 166 minutes, which should be plenty of time as I won't be copying that many games. Next we'll click the link to go to the EmuDeck website, and then click the button to download app, then click the save file option, and then OK. And next, click the down arrow at the top and the folder icon to open the folder file location. I'll then right click the file, select cut, and then right click again on the desktop and paste one file to the desktop. Next, right click, select properties, click the permissions tab, and check the is executable checkbox and click OK. Now we'll double click the install EmuDeck icon on the desktop to begin the installation. Once it starts you'll see a changelog dialog with all the recent changes and fixes. Review them and then close the window. Since this will be our first time installing EmuDeck we'll simply click the easy mode button which will take care of everything needed and sets everything up for us. I recommend selecting SD card for where you would like EmuDeck to be installed then click OK. At this point, EmuDeck will run its installation script, which will go out to the internet and download and install the various emulators, configurations, and all we have to do is sit back and let it do its thing. Once complete, you'll see this dialog for Yuzu, which is a Nintendo Switch emulator. We'll just click OK. The next dialog will inform us on where to copy our BIOS and ROM files. We'll discuss that in the next segment. From here, just click the exit button. Going back to the EmuDeck guide, from the table of contents, we'll select BIOS and ROMs. In case you're not already familiar, BIOS is the firmware used by a gaming system, which provides runtime services, the hardware initialization, and basically tells the device how to interact with these components. Many consoles and emulators will require the correct BIOS files to play the games within the associated emulator. Similarly, ROMs are the games themselves. It's the program code from the original game, which may have originated from a game cartridge, floppy disks, CDs, or DVDs. Both BIOS and ROM files are copyrighted material, and I'm therefore unable to provide links to them. However, read this section carefully for some hints that you may find helpful in locating them. You could download the files directly from the internet on the Steam Deck. However, you may already have collections of BIOS and ROM files, in that case, copying from a USB stick or from a NAS or network attached storage may be more convenient. Now let's assume you've downloaded an archive of BIOS files to your PC or NAS. Simply copy the BIOS files to the emulation BIOS subfolder on the Steam Deck. 
For the games themselves, after downloading them, you'll find under the Emulation ROMs subfolder, there will be a number of individual folders for each game system. I recommend not dumping a massive number of games in each folder. I started this way myself and later found it's much easier to go through and pick the games that I really want to play versus a massive ROM dump. Totally up to you, but I think you'll have a much better experience. After copying the BIOS and game files, it's now time to move on to the Steam ROM Manager. Notice the Steam icon on the taskbar. If we launch Steam ROM Manager, it will automatically close Steam if it's running. Previously, you would need to close it manually before you could save the game list, but that's no longer the case. When you first launch Steam ROM Manager, the UI may initially appear a bit intimidating, but no worries, it's really pretty easy. On the left hand side, you'll see the parsers that are available, and these parsers are used to identify the games located in the ROM subfolder. If you want to manually turn off specific parsers, you certainly can by flipping the toggle switch beside parsers, and then manually doing the same for each of the systems you're interested in. However, in my experience with it, unless there are game files in the respective folders, it will simply report zero games in the Collections tab on the Steam Deck. That may change in the future, but that is what I'm seeing with the current version. So I just leave the switch for all parsers enabled. Additionally, you can click on a specific parser and find additional configuration options for the selected parser on the right side. I haven't found the need to modify the presets, but it may be helpful at some point and just know that changes can be made if needed. There is a very large list of parsers that cover all of the supported emulators. However, it's the preview option that is the most important option to remember. After clicking preview, click the generate app list button at the bottom. The Steam ROM manager will then begin downloading the artwork for the games and emulators. Wait until the remaining providers is done. Then, one thing I like to do is click the event log option and make sure it reports that all available image URLs were retrieved. Going back to the preview option, we'll start to see images for many of our games. Some of the artwork may be correct, others may be missing or set incorrectly. For example, Speedball for the Amiga has no artwork. If we already have artwork that we downloaded previously, just click the small image icon in the lower right, select the image, and the open button. Now, the artwork has been assigned. There will be other cases where the artwork does exist, but you may need to select it. For the classic arcade game of Donkey Kong, we'll click the arrow left or right and select one that makes sense. That one looks good. In yet other cases, the game name may be entirely incorrect. This game is being reported as Magus Overfull, <laughs> which is a game I've never heard of, but the game is actually the 1981 release of Gorf. There is not currently an option to rename the game. Hopefully that'll be added in a future update. So there are some bugs to be worked out, but for the most part, it does a decent job. This is another one of the reasons why I recommend not dumping a huge number of ROMs and only picking those that you really want to play. At this point, you may be wondering where you can go to download the artwork if you don't already have it. Looking at the resources section on the Emudeck guide, you'll find the Steam Grid DB link. Click that and then type in the name of the game, for example, Sinistar. Here we have two different kinds of artwork, the poster or portrait artwork and the grid art, which we've currently been using. Click the download button and then right click and select save image as and then give it a meaningful name and then click save. Now click the image icon, go to Downloads, and select Sinistar, and the Open button, and now our artwork will be assigned. In the upper right, click the drop-down for Select Type, and select Posters. Posters are important images that you'll see when navigating the list of games for a given emulator on the Steam Deck. You'll want to perform the same steps here for all the images using the portrait or poster version of the game image. It will be done in the same exact way as the grid images that we already covered, so you should already know what to do here. After you've got the artwork just how you want it, this is the most important step next. Towards the bottom middle, 
Click the Save App List button. You'll then see a brief toast message stating merging VDF entries. I then like to click the Event Log and make sure that I see Done Adding and Removing Entries. If you exit without double checking this, the save may not have been completed and you might have to do it all over again. Now we can move to the upper right and close out of the Steam ROM Manager. I will show some tips in a few moments, but let's click the Return to Gaming Mode icon and check out some of the games. I'll press the Steam button and select Library. At the top, you'll notice a new Collections tab that was created by the Steam ROM Manager. Here you'll see each of the systems or consoles listed, and below each is the number of games in parentheses. For instance, I have five PS2 games, and if I navigate over to PlayStation, you can see that I have six games here. And before we jump into a few tips, let's play a little bit of Tekken 3. Round one, fight! Round two, fight! For tip number one, press the quick access button, the one with the three dots, move down to the power icon, and while you're checking out the emulators, you may find it helpful to know the frame rate of the game you're playing. The performance overlay level can be adjusted, but won't appear on the display until you scroll to the bottom and enable show perf overlay in Steam. You can then adjust the amount of detail with the slider up at the top. Now let's put it to good use. For tip number two, I initially had difficulty getting the Wii U emulator working. I documented what I did on the guide, so if you're having similar issues, check out the link in the video description. Now let's play a Wii U game. For tip number three, while I mentioned you can't rename a game in Steam ROM Manager, you can launch Steam in desktop mode and make changes there. Select the game from the list, right click, select properties, and there you can rename the game, change the poster and grid artwork, as you see here with the game that was previously identified as Magus Overfull. <laughs> Let's check it out. For tip number four, while in Steam Desktop, click the Discover icon on the taskbar. From here, the emulators are updated quite frequently. If updates exist, click the yellow Update section, then in the upper right, click the Update All button. The latest versions of the emulators will then be downloaded and installed.
for tip number five. If you're familiar with Emulation Station on previous retro gaming handhelds, Raspberry Pis, or other devices, you'll be happy to know that Emulation Station is also installed by Emudeck. Within the Collections tab, select Emulation. Here you'll find the installed emulators as well as the Emulation Station front end. From here, you can launch your games, change the theme, scrape the artwork for your games, and much more. This is another way that Emudeck makes emulation on the Steam Deck even easier. Now we'll check out a Switch game using the Yuzu emulator. If you enjoy emulation and want to run your favorite games on the Steam Deck, Emudeck is perhaps the easiest way to get set up quickly. The Steam Deck is no doubt an extremely capable PC in a handheld form factor, allowing you to emulate systems that most handhelds would struggle with. I'm absolutely loving the Steam Deck after having it a little over a month, and I'll have some new and exciting Steam Deck content in the very near future. Do check out the link to the guide in the video description below, any updated information will appear there first. If you found this video helpful, please click the like button. If you haven't already subscribed and interested in more content like this, please click the subscribe button. And with that, I look forward to talking with you again very soon.